Hey everybody and welcome back to Bigfoot Cooking where today we are making Rice Krispie treats but probably in ways that you've never seen done. We're going to do one batch completely from scratch. That's right. This we're going to make the marshmallows and we're going to make the puffed rice. I tell you what, I have not seen it done anywhere on the web, but we are making one completely from scratch. We're going to be making one using Fruity Pebbles because, oh, why not Fruity Pebbles? It's still a Rice Krispie. It's just something totally different. And then we're going to make one with a peanut butter that is just awesome. It's between the peanut butter that's going in it and it's made out of peanut butter Captain Crunch. Also, we're going to throw down some s'mores. Oh, yeah. You're going to want to check this guy out. So, guys... Let's get started. All right, so the first one we're making today is the completely from scratch at home, making the marshmallows, making the puffed rice, making all of it in your own kitchen. That's right. You didn't know this could be done, but today's the day for you to learn. So I got myself a frying pan full of oil here and I've got my metal strainer. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna put the rice in the strainer and lower it into the oil and cook. And believe me, it cooks quick. So let me show you. First thing, we get this guy lit. We'll just turn on the, the gas, poof, little heat. And now we're gonna wait for this to heat up. We need the oil at about 400 degrees, four, 425, somewhere in that range. The reason why the oil is so hot is that way when the rice hits it, poof, it swells up. Now, in this case, we're doing just parboiled rice where like the minute rice, success rice, the you know quick rice, basically. It puffs up a little bit bigger. If you could get parboiled rice, it does better, or you could even parboil your own. But for now, well, we're just using our minute rice. So I'm gonna give us a few minutes to heat up and well, let me edit the boring part out. All right, our oil has hit 425, 430, somewhere right in that range. So let's go ahead and well, let's start making some puffed rice. Now, like I said, you got your metal strainer. Again, make sure it's metal. If it's plastic, bad things will happen. I'm gonna take about a quarter scoop of rice and just set it right down in here. And we're gonna cook this in real time. I'm not gonna say a word. Y'all watch how fast this goes. We just drop. and done, just like that. Now, you see these are not the biggest that you can make. If you, again, if you actually were to cook the rice and then lay it out and dry it and then do this, you'll actually get bigger puffs of rice. But considering how quickly this cooks, they pretty much double in size. So from here, I'm just gonna dump them into my little tray here. I've got about five sheets of paper towels right here, and we're gonna let that absorb the extra oil off of it. And yes, it is crispy rice. And well, we're just gonna repeat this until I go through two cups of rice. So let me do it quickly. And there you go. Two cups of legit fried rice, AKA puffed rice. Now, the longer you can sit here and shake this and let this drain over the pot, the less your towel's gonna have to work to clean up some of the extra fats. But trust me, this is really simple. It's it, There is no difficulty to this. And you wanna make sure you use a neutral oil, like a vegetable oil. Don't do this in olive oil, because then you're starting to put some of the flavor of the oil into the rice. And we're making Rice Krispies, not some Italian dish. So just keep it simple with this one, all right? So now that I got this done, well, let's move on to making the marshmallows, because hey, that's the really cool part. And then from there, boom, we've got Rice Krispies. So next step. And just in case y'all was wondering, this makes almost six cups once it gets done. This is gonna be some mighty fine eating later on. I gotta find Benson and tell Now me. for the ooey gooey good part. That's right. We are making maple syrup marshmallows. Yeah, you hadn't seen those in the store, have you? Heck no, everything's just plain puff sugar. But this, this is gonna bring your your treats to a gourmet status that you've never had before. So we're gonna start out, you gotta have a mixer. You don't have to have a stand mixer. You can do this by hand, but it's gonna involve you sitting there for about 20 minutes. So I do really, if you got it, break it out, all right? We're gonna take three packs of gelatin. Now each of these packs is about a tablespoon. So we're gonna do three packs of unflavored gelatin in here. Get those guys nice and happily set in the bottom. And then out of our cup of water, half a cup of water here, 
Turn it on for just a second, just to mix it. And then we're gonna forget about this guy for a minute. Now, it's time to make the creamy goodness that becomes it. And for that, well, once again, time for the, the hot eye. Now we're gonna take our other half a cup of water and add it to the pan. And there, I have a cup of maple syrup. Now, make sure you use the real maple syrup. I know that there are several store brands that are imitation, but it won't give you the same result as the real, slightly more expensive, but real maple syrup. All right, that's what we're wanting here. So we've got a cup, a cup of maple syrup, a half a cup of water, and now, basically I'm gonna give it a little bit of a stir to mix it together, and we're gonna turn on the heat. Flame on. Now, with this, you don't wanna start this out on high. You don't wanna cook it from where it's sitting and get it boiling hot. We want to actually bring this up really slowly. So it, it can take anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes for this to happen. So I got the flame set on low. We're gonna take our candy thermometer in here. Now, if you don't have a candy thermometer, you can use an Insta-Read. You just have to check it a lot. But on the thermometer itself, if you ever looked at one, there's like several different little comments as far as what you're making. So you've got a hard ball, soft ball, hard crack. You know, it's different levels of candy that you wanna make on this. And for this one, we're trying to get it to 240 degrees. That's, that's what they call the soft ball. And basically what that means is if, if you didn't have the thermometer, what you could do is take a spoon and pull a little bit out and drop it in a, a little glass of water. And that drop would of course cool off. And when you pick it up, it would be kind of a, a hard ball or a soft squishy ball. And that's how they determine that level of it. But in this case, well, we've got the thermometer and we're just gonna let this thing slowly heat up to 240 degrees. Don't rush it, don't shortcut it. This makes a big difference in the marshmallow. So now, while this is blooming and this is boiling, we wait. All right, we have hit the 240. We were bubbling like crazy. I just turned it off. And like you see, we've got a nice sticky little drip on here. We'll go ahead and set this to the side. And now where our gelatin has been blooming, we'll go ahead and bust it up, get it going. And now you're gonna slowly pour this in. Now, the main reason why you're gonna do it is so that way you don't splash this hot, hot liquid death onto your skin, because it will leave a mark that will last you the rest of your life. So we're just gonna keep this on low and pour it in slow. Now that we got it all in, I'm gonna bump it up just a little bit. All right, now I know it doesn't look like much is happening right now, but just watch. Give this just a minute and you're gonna watch it all turn into frothy. It's gonna whip this up into some of the best marshmallow stuff you've ever had. All right, we let this go for about five minutes and we have a nice luxurious looking marshmallow. Let's go ahead and add ourselves about a tablespoon of vanilla. Mix that in right here at the finish line. Nice and easy. That way we got a good little bit of vanilla flavor to it. And then Rice Krispie time. Woo, look at that right there. That is pretty pretty. Now, it'll look better on this, won't it? So let's go ahead and let's get our mixing done. Let me toss this in the sink. And now we're gonna take our bowl and scoop everything out into our pan of puffed rice. And now the really tough part, mix. Alrighty. And now we have ourselves our first batch of genuine, absolutely homemade Rice Krispie treats or puffed rice treats if you're not going by brand name. So now that I got these out of the way, let me get started on the next one. So that way there's not only the, the completely homemade variety, but oh, these peanut butter ones are awesome. Let me get started on them. Look at him making those high class Rice Krispie treats. Well, I also can make really good Rice Krispie treats, but I say we show him how it's really done. Now to do this right, I had to put on some green gloves. I hate getting marshmallow underneath these claws, you know. We're going to start out by taking our pot here and we're going to melt a whole stick of butter in it. <laughs> That's right. This is the real Bigfoot cooking. We'll just drop in our stick of butter here and we'll wait for it to melt. Give it a stir every once in a while until it's all gone. 
we're going to add a whole bag of marshmallows to it. These are the mini marshmallows, and it's about six cups. So we into the pot. And Chef says cooking is hard. Seriously? Now make sure you stir these so they don't stick to the bottom. That would not be a good crispy, now would it? Now before they get good and melted, we're going to add a pinch of salt to it. Why a pinch, you ask? Well, because there's so much sugar in here, we don't want to over-sugar your taste buds. And so this will calm it down, just a little. And of course, every good Bigfoot out there loves the taste of vanilla. And so we'll just pour in about a tablespoon here. Well, maybe a tablespoon, <laughs> maybe a bit more. Well, look, he here. Arsh marshmallows look very marshmallowy, don't they? Now it's time to pour in these delicious fruity pebbles. Look at the colors go. Now make sure you pour the whole thing in at once. There's about seven cups here, fruity pebbles. And well, stir. Now would be a good time to turn off the heat. After all, we don't want anything to burn. All right, everything has been marshmallowed. Now it's time to place them in the pan. Come on out, all of you. No, all at once. No need to leave anybody behind. Oh, this is a good dish indeed. Now once they're in the pan, spread them out quickly. Don't let them get cool. And there you have it. Ta-da! Now give these things about an hour to cool and you can cut them into squares. But as for me, <laughs> I'm licking the spoon. See y'all back at the cave. Now this next one has my favorite cereal of all. Peanut butter Captain Crunch. Ho, ho, ho. And this is a whole normal box. It's eight cups. Yeah, I guess if you got the family size, you might still have some for breakfast, but oh no, no, all of that's going in this one. This, I can't wait for this one to get done. Now, to start this out, we're gonna begin with, in America, we call it corn syrup. I think over the pond, you guys call it glucose but we have a cup of corn sugar that basically, well, literally thick like molasses. This stuff is ooey gooey and good. So let me give it a minute to drain back out of here. All right, good enough. And from there, a cup of sugar. That's right, we're gonna add sugar to our sugar. What's more American than that? And then we're just gonna hit it with a splash of water I know, what's the little bit of water gonna do? Well, it actually helps dissolve some of the sugar. It gives it a shot because it doesn't dissolve that well into the corn syrup. Now, what we're looking for here is for this to kind of start to bubble on the edges as we're going along. We're not really looking so much for a temperature yet as we're looking for just everything getting all warmed up. So I'm just gonna keep stirring this until the edges start to bubble a bit. All right, at about 220, we started to go bubble crazy. So we're gonna cut this guy off and we're gonna add in our peanut butter now. We'll just slide in a cup of peanut butter. You like how that came out nicely? Spray it first and it works out so much better for the delivery. So now everything is hot. Let's go ahead and stir in our peanut butter and get it mixed. Now you could do crunchy peanut butter with this, but in this case, I just stuck with creamy since we got enough other add-ons here, but you know, do what you like. If you wanna put a little bit of peanuts in your peanut butter bar, well, nothing's stopping you but you. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put in just a little pinch of salt. That way all the sugar that's in here doesn't, um, well, you can get stuff that's a little too sweet and you don't wanna mess all that up now, do you? Oh, and of course, of course, we can't forget a shot of a vanilla, about a tablespoon-ish, I mean, ish is at your discretion. Mix all this in till we have a nice, smooth, I guess you would call it batter. You know, it's funny as I'm doing this, the peanut butter has a really good smell and it's competing in the house now for where we made the maple syrup stuff earlier. Oh, good, good stuff. Everybody's mixed in and nice and runny. Well, Captain Crunch time. Away they go. That's right, into the hot tub. We'll just stir these bad boys around. Now when you're stirring these, don't stir too hard because you don't want to crush them up. You just want to get everything all ooey gooey. Right. Does that look ooey gooey enough for you? Let's go ahead and plop them into a pan now. Man, that looks good. 
Now from here, you've kind of got some options on your toppings. You could take and melt chocolate and pour all over it. But in this case, we're gonna take the, I guess, lazy way out. And we are just gonna take some chips and spread them in everywhere. And since this is still pretty warm, well, they're gonna melt in some. There's your about two cups of chocolate. And I'm just gonna come in and kind of mash these guys in there. That way they know they're home. Let's set these guys to the side and that's right. Next, s'mores. Oh, this is, I tell you what, the s'mores are like the star of the show here. Mm. Now, s'mores time. That's right, not only is this the put together, but it's the final technique at the end that's gonna be like, woo, puts it over the top. Now for this, we've got five cups of marshmallows on this side, plus another cup here, so that's a whole bag of marshmallows, mini marshmallows, of course. We're gonna do a little bit of salt, again, just like with the others, so that way they're not oversweet. A little bit of vanilla. I got a stick of Kerrygold butter. And from there, we are running five cups of Rice Krispies, two cups of Golden Grahams, and one cup of Teddy Grahams. Oh, that's right. Talk about going back to your childhood, along with the, like I say, the other cup of marshmallows and a cup of chocolate chips. I mean, this is s'mores all day long. So let's get started. Step one, melt the butter. Now in this recipe, you really need to have, I know for like the show, it looks nice to have all this stuff spread out here, but even at home, you need to be ready to go because once this thing, once the, the marshmallow gets ready, it's almost a race against time to get everything in it and in the pan before it starts to solidify. I mean, it's worth it, but it is a rush. All right, our stick of butter has gone to visit the motherland. Now, marshmallow time into the pool. And of course, stir. Don't let this stick to the bottom and burn now. Not for s'mores. Oh no, not for s'mores. As it's coming down, we'll do our splash, dash, slight pour, basically tablespoon of vanilla and a good happy pinch of salt. Really? You know, I'm sitting here stirring and stirring these marshmallows wondering why they're not getting done. I looked, <laughs> I ran out of gas. So if you guys have been following for a while, you now know about how long a almost full bottle will last. Cause I've only put, I've only used this for the show recently. And so that's how long a tank lasts. I don't know, figure out when I started using this and that'll let you know, but man, but it's working now, we're melting. So flame on y'all. All right, we have achieved marshmallow happiness finally. So now flame off. And game on. In with the Krispies. In with the Grahams. In with the Teddy Bears. Whee! Y'all have fun. And we mix quickly. All right, now that everything is pretty well mixed, we're gonna add our marshmallows so that way they'll be lumpy in there without melting in. Because that way you get that little bit of goodness of the gooey of that too. And our final thing before we dump will be the chocolate chips because you know they'll melt quick. And well, I'm trying to keep this kind of clean looking. Everybody looks happy. Party time. Whoop. That's right, the final coup de gras. We'll just mix this in. And right before they start to smear in, into the, the little mold we have here. Come on, y'all. Don't get too chilled out and relaxed. Now, as you guys are noticing, I have pushed these over to one side. I actually want these a little thicker because, well, wait till you see the final act for these. Now, I'm gonna set these off to the side. We're gonna come back in about two hours after all of them have cooled down. We'll start cutting them and we're gonna start snacking right. Be back soon. And here you have it. Four totally different Rice Krispies. Now, of course, we're gonna taste test them. I mean, why wouldn't we now that they're cooled off? And we're gonna start out with, well, what we started out with, our completely homemade Rice Krispie. So let me slice off a piece of that. Now, if we take just this little bit of corner right here, first thing you notice is the marshmallow, of course, being not a commercial marshmallow, it has a little different feel to it. It's almost kind of jiggly, but well, let's see how she tastes after she's had a chance to cool down. Now, the first thing you're gonna notice when you try this compared to like the store-bought Rice Krispies is because these Rice Krispies we made right here, of course, they're slightly different than store-bought, 
they're actually a little more crunchy. I mean, you feel them pop in your mouth a little bit more. So that adds a little dynamic, if you like, a little more crispy to it. And it's not as sweet. And as you notice, we made it out of maple syrup. So we didn't have like a ton of sugar put into it like some of the others. So you don't have that overly sweet, overly processed sugary taste, but it's still, it's really good. So if you think Rice Krispies are a little too sweet for you, or maybe you're trying to cut back on refined sugar, this right here is not too shabby. I mean, it will absolutely fill the bill. And I don't know if it's got less calories or not, but it's definitely got really good flavor with the maple syrup instead of sugar. And I don't think these will last too long around here. All right, next we got Benson's Chef Artiste, whatever have you. This is pretty much your traditional Rice Krispie where you've got, like you saw, your butter, and your marshmallow and everything like that. And so let's just cut a corner out of it and see what we got. See, nice colors. I mean, come on, it's Fruity Pebbles. Fruity Pebbles is pretty much about the same thing as Rice Krispies. It's just got a lot more color and it's got a little different flavor profile. So, well, let's see if we can make this disappear. Now see, this is more of your traditional Rice Krispie as far as like the crunch and the, the feel and what have you, but it's also made a little more traditionally. You know, we didn't make everything at home. Now, it's still really good. And even if you were to mix 50-50 with this and just say regular Rice Krispies, you're still gonna get all the color, all the flavor and not a bad deal. I mean, come on, it's a Rice Krispie. How wrong can you get with that? Now, next on the cutout list, are peanut butter and chocolate. Oh, these are things that go absolutely great together, right? So let's go ahead and slice this up a, a little piece of that. Now, as far as cutting out, these were a lot denser than these two, so it took a little more knife effort to it, but, it, and they're even a little bit more sticky, but let's see how we taste. See if all that peanut butter and chocolate worked out together, like, well, like you think they would. You know, this would be amazing with a glass of milk because the two would go together really well. Like I say, it's a little bit sticky, a little bit denser, but you've got the chocolate, you've got the peanut butter. I mean, this right here, this is almost a meal in itself. Like I say, a glass of milk, you've got your breakfast cereal, you're out the door and going. This is, this is really good. All right. And now the s'mores. Now the s'mores aren't completely finished yet and I'll show you why. Let me go ahead and cut me off a piece of that and I'll show you why we need just a little bit more. Now, like you see in the piece, you've got all the things that go into s'mores. You've got the graham cracker, you've got the marshmallows, you've got the chocolate, but the only thing that's missing is when you're out by the campfire, you know, you, you have that little bit of, you put the marshmallow over the fire and you get it toasty. Well, this is missing that, but have no fear. I have a solution. We're just gonna put a little bit of toasting on it, just enough to darken it, and that'll give that little extra s'more flavor to it. <laughs> Look at there, you got that little extra black into it, and it's even got that really good campfire smell, so. Let me see how this guy goes. <laughs> it even heated it back up. <laughs> that is really awesome. I mean, I tell you what, just that little bit of smoke and sizzle on it, it makes it the perfect s'more. And oh, I'm gonna have to slice this guy up small so that way I can get both ends of it. But I tell you what, this right here, the s'mores, I'm glad I saved it for last because it is absolutely amazing. So now you know how to make Rice Krispies all the way from completely homemade to, well, some really gourmet stuff. So until next time, remember, you guys need to do this. You guys, I mean, you didn't see the oven hit once. Yes, we had the burner, but now you guys know how to make some really fantastic s'mores. And you know that Bigfoot is real. Y'all take care. I'm chowing down. Yes, you can make the marshmallow at home and you can make the puff rice, puff rice. <laughs>